let's um, let's kick things off then. Um, and so, oh, what have I done there? Have I gone a little bit? Yeah, you're right now. All right, uh, kick things off. Um, a warm welcome to everyone on the session tonight. Um, a very exciting week for Hockey New South Wales um, with the launch of our Education Week, um, which is a brand new initiative um, all about supporting our volunteers um, that we know are so important to all sports. But um, we know in hockey we have a small but very passionate group of volunteers that are the lifeblood of our sport. So um, we've got sessions running all week in the morning, across lunch, in the evening. And again, that's all about trying to fit in with our volunteers. And we know that um, they're juggling all sorts of responsibilities, work, family. So again, by having it spread across different times of the day, we're hoping we can get as many people involved as possible. Um, the plan tonight um, was for myself um, and David Thompson, just to provide a little bit of an intro. Um, on multicultural, in particular, the multicultural program that we've now had in place for a little over 12 months. Um, but then hand over to um, three very special guest presenters. Um, and we're very lucky to have Yash, Nick and Herman um, with us um, this evening. Um, three very passionate, driven people um, that have been very kind in guiding Hockey New South Wales um, at the start of our journey, um, but we're looking forward to um, introducing them to our volunteer network as well and drawing on their um, experience and expertise. Um, before we do kick off, just a couple of housekeeping. Um, we are going to record tonight's session um, and hopefully it becomes a little bit of a, a tool we can use for volunteers that couldn't be part of tonight or as we get on a little bit of a road show about um, our multicultural engagement program. So if you don't want your headshot um, part of the video, feel free to flick off. I won't be um, offended um, and, we'll, um, and we'll go from there. So I imagine everyone can see my little starting page presentation. Yep. All right, let's, um, let's start. So what David and I wanted to kick off with is by a little bit of background on the Multicultural Engagement Program. Um, and as part of that, um, I wanted to talk to um, some of the information coming out of Sport Australia. Um, and in particular, they talked to three current phenomena um, that are gonna become more prevalent when we're talking about sport. And that's that the Australian population is getting older. Um, I heard a stat the other day that in the next 40 years, they anticipate people over 65 years of age will double. So the question is, what's sport doing to cater for that? Um, we're coming more ethnically diverse and time poor. Um, I also heard a phrase the other day that said that, whereas once upon a time, um, people used to plan their week around sport, they now expect um, sport to work around their week. So things are changing. Um, and that's all culminating in what Sport Australia is telling us, and that's fewer, Austra fewer Australians are playing sport and engaging in um, physical activity than ever before. So sport is at a bit of a crossroads. There's some challenges for us to take up, um, but uh, all the sports we talk to, and hockey in particular, are up for the challenge, um, and it's all about adapting and, and making sure we ensure we remain relevant. Um, when we talk about New South Wales in particular, um, New South Wales is actually recognised as one of the mo most culturally diverse um, cities in the world. Um, and when we look at it um, in regards to Australia, Sydney has the largest overseas born population of all capital cities. Um, I find this one incredible, but we're talking about 307 ancestries, 146 religions, 215 led, um, languages and 21% of the New South Wales population from non-English speaking backgrounds. So that's the context um, in New South Wales. When we actually um, look at hockey in particular, um, 
I mean, globally, we're talking about the third most popular sport on the planet with over 30 million people playing this sport. In Australia, um, there's a little bit of work to do in regards to get hockey that traction that we've seen globally. Um, it's recognised as the ninth most popular team sport with a little over 200,000 people playing. And then if we start to cut into the people playing hockey in New South Wales, we now know that 8% of those are born overseas, 21% have one or both parents born overseas, and all of that 8% born overseas, we're talking about 98 different countries. So that's, that's the benchmark. That's where Hockey New South Wales is at at the moment. So we know, we know who's playing hockey. Um, and so we're now, we're, we're thinking we're about to start a, a journey on this. So I might hand over to you, um, David, for the next slide. Yep, thank you. So the data is absolutely telling and provides hockey with the most amazing opportunity. We do not have to introduce our game to anyone, anybody, because our game is so well known and well played and regarded across the world. And our Hockey Roos and Kookaburras are two of the most revered national teams in world sport. So our opportunity is, as, as this slide says, is to provide, provide every person at all stages of their life, regardless of their gender, ability, ethnicity, no matter where they live, what part of life they're at, we want to give them the opportunity to play hockey in a safe, fun and inclusive way. But to do this, we've got to challenge the norm. Traditional competitions, traditional formats, traditional services, traditional uniforms, they won't cut it. We need to move with the times. We need to become more accessible. We need to be more adaptable and we need to be more available. And if we do those things, we can make a huge difference to our sport and to our sporting population. If we just uh, go over the page and we want to show you this video that we captured in November this year at our League of Nations Festival and at our Come and Try Day. And this moment in November absolutely excited me as to what's in store for us if we can capitalise on this opportunity. So, Craig, if you press play and we'll uh, give it a go. You got sound? I think Craig's frozen, has he? Uh, there is sound to this. Um, so, <laughs> Craig, are you there? Yeah, let's... let's try again. Still no sound. We've got 10 ambassadors from all different cultures and they've reached into their communities um, to bring them together. And you're right, it's a melting pot of fun. What an opportunity for multicultural communities to play on an Olympic venue, Sydney here at Sydney Olympic Park. This is where the Olympics were held. And they're out here representing their communities, playing at such a fantastic community. The lights are on. It's wonderful to see. Yeah, it's been really fun just meeting with different people from different backgrounds and playing against them. We just first a Dutch side and I loved listening to them speaking in Dutch. music, food stalls, uh, uh, DJs, 
the works, song, dance, drums. Um, we want to see the cultures come to life. This year is COVID. That's why, like, limited. But next year, hopefully, everything is good. And uh, we are coming with a lot of, lot of families and kids as well. I, I don't know about you, but um, the hair on the back of my neck still raises when I watch that video and I, and I think about what we're going to create with that event in, November, in October, November this year. Um, I just can't wait. And um, I don't want to steal any of the thunder of our three great presenters, um, Herman Nick from Australian International Sports Organisation and Yash from the Go Active Project. Um, you guys have inspired me to, um, to make a difference and to lead. And uh, I think, you know, you know uh, what you each have... Um, meant to me in the early stages of our relationship so um here we go and so craig the next the next slide is the how how are we going to do it so i'll hand over to our guests to uh take us through uh that section yep good we will share screen now Brilliant. Can everyone see that? Great. Excellent. Thanks, Dan and Craig, for the kind introduction. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight. Uh, and it's wonderful to see the work uh, that Hockey New South Wales is doing in the multicultural engagement space. And we're proud, proud to be involved uh, with such a great organisation as Hockey New South Wales. We thought we'd start with the quick overview of the objectives and the agenda uh, for this evening's workshop. So the first there is the benefits of having an inclusive environment, how to identify and attract multicultural communities, tips for better engagement and access to resources and tips. We'll pass over to Yash now uh, yep. for an overview of Go Active and the great work which she also does uh, in this space. Thanks, Yash. Um, thank you, everyone. And um, thank you, Hockey New South Wales and um, for inviting me to be part of this um, Education Week uh, and Multicultural Awareness Workshop. Um, it's always a pleasure working with you guys. And hopefully, um, like you said earlier, David, um, this is uh, just the beginning of things to come and where we can kind of take this, um, this partnership and, and grow the game of hockey um, across all um, cultures. So a little bit about GoActive and why we exist. Um, as you can see on the, on the, um, the PowerPoint behind we exist because we identify the lack of culturally appropriate spaces uh, specifically for cold women to participate in sport uh, and recreational activity. And for people like me, it's a lived experience. Um, having played in um, sport most of my life, specific, uh, specifically uh, AFL um, being the most recent, when I played at different clubs, um, I always felt like I was the other person. And um, it's not that they were excluding me, um, it's just that they weren't really making an effort to include me. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go on. Um, go Active um, also uh, to break down barriers and promote social inclusion. So we understand the power of sport to do that. We want to increase the representation um, of minority women in sport. And ultimately, we want to improve the participation rates of cold women uh, in sport and recreation. Um, and we aim to... To, connect, to help to connect them to, to clubs and bridge the gap um, and get them participating. So that's just, and, and the last thing is we aim to educate sporting codes and clubs um, on cultural competence and how to better engage with cult communities. And I feel like that's something that we're doing here today. So thank you for having me. Um, and I'll pass that back on to um, Herman and Nicholas. Perfect. Thanks so much, <coughs> Yash, and for everyone taking up their time to be here today. Very well said. We're all on the journey together. It's one big family. We want to help and create more. Inclusive environment for the game of hockey. This could change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. 
It speaks to youth in a language they can understand. Sport can create hope where once there was only despair. So I guess the reason why we share this slide and this quote is that it's obviously bigger than sport. The changes that you make for your environment and your club will have a lasting impact on people outside of the club and in their everyday life. And that's what the power of sport can do. And we find that this quote really touches on that. So I guess, what are some of the benefits of having an inclusive and diverse organisation or club? Members, it increases your number of fans, participants and volunteers. Talent, you get to be able to identify new talent and exciting talent for your club and sport. Funding, it obviously increases your chances of access through funding, through funding opportunities as well as sponsorship and grants. And the most exciting one for me is it generates new ideas and fresh ideas for your club and organisation. Overall, the benefits of having a stronger sport, a stronger club, it gives you that stronger community as we touched on earlier. And I'll throw it back to Yash. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to summarise quickly about um, how we can um, effectively engage with cold communities. Is there a, can you guys hear me properly? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so I think a few things that you can um, really ask yourself and ask your club is um, what participants uh, do we prioritize um, and how accessible are our facilities uh, to cold communities? Are they welcoming? Um, are you willing to, to make it happen? Uh, and by that, what I mean is, are you willing to put in the work uh, to research, to learn, to advocate for cold communities. Um, it takes work to be inclusive and you just can't say, yeah, you know, we are, uh, everyone is welcome here. Um, you got to back it up with some action as well. Um, are your local communities reflected in your club? Um, are there representatives that can tell you what their needs are? Uh, is it safe for them to speak up without feeling um, intimidated? Um and what type of people are on your community, your executive boards and your staff? Um, and I think one thing that I really want you to take away from, from my presentation today, and if it's anything, it's this, this sentence at the end of the, the slide. And if you don't intentionally include, uh, you're unconsciously uh, excluding. Um, so that's something that is um, that, that, that I'm passionate about. So if if you just go, go around and saying, yeah, we're welcoming, but not actually um, do something about it, then you're, you're not. Um, so that's something to kind of um, keep in the back of your mind. And um, just quickly touch on the, the picture that we've got on um, that's on the side of the uh, presentation. Um, and I like this picture because it really sums up the meanings quite nicely. Uh, the top two are... Um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's the bottom two that I really want to uh, briefly mention. Um, and I want us to move away uh, from using the word integration uh, because that's not what our aim is here. Um, our aim is to be inclusive. Um, and integration, as you can see in that uh, photo, is having a little circle within a bigger circle. Um, it's when, for example, you allow diverse women to come into your, um, your club as long as they can adjust to the current club culture and requirements, so you don't change anything about your club. Whereas inclusion, on the other hand, uh, really creates a sense of belonging and unity. Uh, for example, it's when you allow diverse women into your club, their full authentic selves, and you making them feel welcome, respecting their culture, norms, beliefs, and learning what you could do to better support them to get the best out of them. Um, so... That's just a little bit about um, about that photo. And like I said, if there is anything that you take away um, from, from what I say throughout this whole presentation is uh, if you don't intentionally include, um, then you're unconsciously uh, excluding. And I'll continue on. Um, so I think another thing that's really important um, is to understand the diversity in community. Um, so get to know your surroundings and your demographics. Who makes up the majority of your local government area or where your club is? Um, and once you know this, um, then you can go on to understand their culture and their norms. Um, and one thing that I really um, stress when I'm, when I'm doing these presentations is don't be afraid 
to ask questions. Um, and sometimes we have to acknowledge that we don't know. Um, and more often than not, we are, the cult community are open, um, are open to telling you a lot about their culture um, in, and answering any questions um, that you might have. And for me, um, no question is off limits if you are genuinely trying to understand and learn how you can engage. Um, so, um, yeah, ask as many questions as you can and acknowledge and celebrate the differences um, and definitely be open uh, to new learning experiences. Uh, that's something that I find um, is really important. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Yash. And a lot of the messaging is going to resonate um, with what you're saying. And I guess continue on from the how. Um, one bit of advice that we always say is to look inwards to begin with. So look at your club organisation and structure, like Ash mentioned. Make sure that all your facilities, they're clean and they have access to um, all genders that are available. Um, potentially some multicultural organisations and groups may need access to a potential prayer room for their games and training facilities. My own personal example, uh, when I was conducting grassroots uh, cricket competition in winter, we had uh, participants that needed to stop the game to do their prayers and their referees and umpires were happy for that to allow. And that sort of led for a good positive experience for that day. No one felt um, excluded. Everyone was part of the day and part of the event. We turned out to have a positive experience. So we always say to look inwards, as Yash mentioned, while you're doing your research. Another key factor is your history and information pack about your club slash organisation. Uh, communities want to feel part of your club. They want to feel part of the community, and this is their way of doing so by representing your club. So for them to have an understanding of how long you've been around for, what uh, role you play within your community will make a significant difference, and they will definitely want to contribute towards that, with not only being participating, but also volunteering and bringing their community along as well. Excellent. To further identify and attract multicultural participants, we've also highlighted uh, some key areas here uh, which can be a focus for your club and association. So the first is a relationship with local schools. And on the next slide, we have some data to help you target some specific schools within your region and your postcode. Second is the migrant resource and multicultural centres. So both local councils, Hockey New South Wales, and through the support of our organisation and Yash's team, we can help identify those groups which provide extracurricular activities to schools uh, and to local communities to help them engage better in the sport of hockey and through physical activity. And we also have multicultural competitions and organisations there. Uh, so around uh, the state, uh, some groups uh, socially and outside of normal playing hours will run their own uh, sport or physical activity, and that may be hockey or that may be another sport, but again, that provides an opportunity to obviously identify and then hopefully attract them to your club uh, and make them feel, feel a part of your club. So keep an eye out for that in the local area and hopefully we can engage uh, some more, more participants to the sport of hockey. As I mentioned, uh, with the school data, uh, and also as, as Craig and Yash have mentioned previously, uh, there's, a, there's a huge opportunity here uh, to attract uh, more multicultural participants to the sport. So I've identified uh, via the ACARA data, so it's A-C-A-R-A, -A, uh, which you can type into Google, uh, and it provides an Excel database of all schools uh, within the state. So for example, here we've gone with Parramatta and the postcode 2150. Uh, and you can see not only total enrolments, uh, which helps with flyer distribution and marketing collateral, but also indigenous enrolments and language background other than English percentage. Uh, so whether you're tailoring your marketing uh, to, different, to different schools and you know you can be specific to different schools, this is a great data piece uh, which we use and um, which we've helped Hockey New South Wales use uh, with promotion uh, of hockey uh, to different communities. And to continue on to the how and looking at more of the marketing and communication aspect, our advice is to have flyers and campaigns that are quite simple and easy to read. Make use of social media, uh, multicultural communities we feel as though are attracted to short hype reels and video clips that are quite often shared even on 
um, social media platforms such as WhatsApp, for example. Um, you can explore opportunities through multicultural marketing media outlets, which are normally distributed to at multicultural grocery stores, community festivals and events. Um, Pre-COVID, there were quite a few multicultural events that were all across New South Wales where thousands of people would be in attendance. Um, and hopefully once COVID is eased, those events will continue to run and we'd like to see hockey at those events as well. It's a great opportunity to promote your club and the sport at multicultural festivals. And I guess one of the biggest ones is word of mouth. Never underestimate the power of word of mouth, particularly if you can identify one of the community members that might already be in your club. If you can bring them along the journey, they're the ones that are going to drive their respective communities to your club and organisation. That's worked well for us as part of the Hockey New South Wales Community Ambassador Program. We've seen the power of that and the power of our ambassadors that have drawn in participants as well as various media outlets. And you can do the same effect for your local club as well. It's just about identifying those one or two individuals that are willing to promote and help your club. Here are some examples. On the left, we have the Hockey New South Wales flyer that we used for the League of Nations events, which was a come and try event in Blacktown, as well as the League of Nations Cup. And we had quite a successful registration rate for both events. And on the right is a hockey, an AFL flyer, which they used for the seat, game, seat games in 2019. We'll play a short video clip, which is from the Sydney Junior Winter Cricket Association on how they promote their participants. We feel as though that video clip is quite simple, has a great uh, members that are part of that video clip. We understand that not all clubs and associations will have access to funding to produce such a video clip, but there's always opportunities to work with Hockey New South Wales to potentially look at uh, local grants that can help you assist with that. And we know that Hockey New South Wales have great access to resources, particularly around um, flyers and promotional materials, which can also assist your club. Some images of community festivals. This one is Paramasala. These uh, festivals are available on the Multicultural New South Wales website. If you want to look at your local particular region, you can also look at your local government council website as well. Again, if you have any challenges researching some upcoming events and festivals, please liaise with Hockey New South Wales and we can assist in that regard as well. Um. Following from that, thank you, Herman. Um, so I think for me, another really important um, point is um, to really commit to real diversity and not just a tick box approach. And I think um, I'm, I'm speaking to hockey, but I think, David, you've done a really great job in doing this already by, um, by asking us, you know, reaching out to GoActive and to Herman and Nicholas as well. Um, and getting us to help with this. And I think that's something that is um, really, really important. And there's a couple of things that you can ask yourself and your club um, moving forward. And have I committed to learning about those who are different? Um, and don't just accept, I think for me, don't, don't just accept what you hear about that culture, about that race or religion. Um, get to know someone from that culture and learn as much as you can about them. Um, is diversity and inclusion is explicitly articulated as one of your values um, and in your strategic plan? Um, is this something that you're really serious about? And is it something that you really want to see at your club? Um, are leaders evaluated on their diversity and inclusion practice? Um, is it institutionalized in, uh, in your sport or in your club? And how do, you hold, um, how do you hold them accountable for making it happen? Is there uh, visible evidence of employee, volunteers, talent diversity? Um, like Herman said um, before, 
when you look at your club for, from a distance, uh, can you see diversity within the club? Um, and are your leaders, employees, volunteers um, and clubs culturally competent? Uh, and what does that mean? Um, do, you, do people at your club actually understand different cultures? Uh, do they know what languages to use? Um, what's offensive to say and what's not to particular um, cultures? Um, and if not, have you provided them with any training or learning? Do they have the skills to communicate and engage with cold communities um, effectively? And one of the most important points um, on this slide is, what are your assumptions? Um, ask yourself, and how do you check your unconscious bias? And I'm going to give you an, an example. And David, you've probably heard this uh, before, but it's it's a great example to give. Um, so uh, there was a, one time a few years back, I was at the Film Master Medal for AFL, um, and I received the Harmony Award, and I was walking up on the stage, and I went, you know, to to accept the award and say a few things and I said yeah oh, thank you so much and as I was walking back uh, to my to back to my seat um, an older white man approached me and was like wow congratulations you know that was really well deserved um, honestly when you got up there I didn't think you'd speak English um, and that that's that's just a really good example about an assumption that someone might have he, he must have seen a Muslim woman wearing a headscarf and thought, oh, okay, she might not be able to speak English well. Uh, not knowing that I was born and raised in Australia and actually have never never known or been anywhere else, any other country. So it's really important for us to, to check what our assumptions are. And I think we all have them and it's about just stripping them back um, and really taking on um, th that person on face value and what you see and interact with them um, in that way. So that's what we mean by... Um, commit to real diversity and not just saying, yeah, we are, we're inclusive, you know, anyone, like I said, anyone is welcome, you know, back, backing that up with some action. So, yeah, that's for me. So it's a really good example that you're actually saying is never assume anything. Um, feel free to ask the question as well, as always. Absolutely. Absolutely. And here are just some basic tips that, quite generic, uh, but something to consider when you, you've done your marketing and your research and you have those communities now representing your club. So here are some really basic tips that you should consider moving forward. We always believe that, uh, goes without saying, parent and volunteer involvement makes a significant difference, particularly with multicultural communities. Uh, we feel as they should always host a parent induction session and make them feel genuinely part of your family and part of your club. Multi, multicultural, multicultural communities are more than willing to help and be part of your club and part of your family, make them feel welcome and train them up appropriately and they'll make a significant difference to your club. Food, uh, various communities have specific dietary requirements. And as Yash said previously, definitely ask the question. If you're in doubt, definitely ask the question. The last thing that you wanna do is to host an event and not have the right food for those communities involved. And that will definitely put them offside and, there's something to consider when hosting all of your events. Alcohol migrant communities may not be from drinking cultures, so that's something to consider as well when you're when you're playing in your club as well as your post club events as well. Uniforms make tracksuit pants and modest uniforms allowable. As Yash mentioned previously, be aware of cultural and religious events as well in the calendar as well. These are always available at Multicultural New South Wales, just to keep it in the back of your mind when promoting and, and hosting upcoming events or functions. Firm believer in being flexible, think about your long-term benefits. Um, as David mentioned earlier on, we've got to be flexible in the game, in, in sport, not just in hockey. Uh, think about your long-term benefits and the so potentially could offer social offerings during the week, which will make a significant difference. And as Nick mentioned earlier, Multicultural communities quite often just get together socially to play a bit of sport, and that's something for your club to consider as well. Finances, flexible payment options, as well as equipment is a big one. If you're attracting communities that are firstly playing the game for the first time in your club, if you have equipment that's available and that they can use, that will make a significant difference so they don't have to commit to the use of equipment financially for the first year round. We've got a short video from Football New South Wales, which is a great example of uh, diverse and inclusive.
this place a lot to them for the enterprise in this club. They're just going to move out of the club and move out of the In terms of resources, I guess our first advice would be to reach out to Hockey New South Wales to begin with. Um, there's a multicultural section, which I'm sure you've already seen on the Hockey New South Wales website, um, and that will link you directly with the relevant resources. And there's obviously our organisation and Yash, we're willing to help uh, where possible. The other resources that are available to you is through Multicultural New South Wales. They have a list of organisations that you can reach out to directly. I know that a lot of clubs are based regionally in New South Wales and Multicultural New South Wales has an advisory group in each government area. And again, they'll be able to point you in the right direction to begin with. Cool. Yeah. We have time for questions. Um, I might just, um, if you don't mind, Nick, uh, Herman and Yash, just add quickly that Whilst there wasn't much sound on that video, a picture tells a thousand stories, and uh, I think you could see how much fun uh, both the in the cricket video and the footy video uh, that the kids were having, and uh, the parents, uh, the volunteers. Um, I just uh, want to uh, just just make people aware that on the sixteenth of March, uh, with Yash's group Go Active, we're hosting a Tri Sport Day at Moorbank Hockey Fields. And we will have 300 young girls uh, from the Go Active program, 29 uh, teams. Uh, Josh, you can tell me exactly the amount of schools, but all heading to Moorbank to try hockey for the first time. And for me, that is so exciting. And uh, we, we just can't wait for two weeks to come. So we'll be there and we'll shortly be starting to put the word out about our League of Nations Cup that will be, as I said, in, in later in the year. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, we, are, we are here to make things happen. Um, and thank you to these, our great partners, Herman, Nick and Yash for being here tonight. And uh, this is the start of a massive journey for hockey in New South Wales. So, Craig, do you want to just say anything else? No, I think you've uh, covered it, and that's actually all about what's ahead of us. So if there's any questions, we'd love to take them. Um, we have obviously know who's in the room, so we can, um, we'd can. we gladly take any one-to-one -one emails from you guys. But any questions at all? Okay, well, I think that's probably a wrap. So um, we'll reach out to you uh, and uh, in your own part of New South Wales, we'll see what we can do to make, make a change and, and make this a big difference to our sport. Cool. All good? Thanks so much, Thanks, everyone. For having us. Wish you all the best for the season. Thank you. Everyone, thank you for having me on. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks.